Buffalo's Chai Main building is a place of character. Some people of the Chai Main say they've heard stories or seen things here. The three legends that I hear all the time are about a buttermilk baby, a giant named Mighty Joe, and an old man with a beard of bees who carries a metal bucket. So I want to get down to the bottom of this. The buttermilk baby is the most recent Chai Main myth. Witnesses claim to hear a strange, buttery voice crying in the night. Maybe just a ghost or something more real. So what can you tell me about the buttermilk baby? Well, we were working at the loading dock just like any other day, and we opened the box with no return address. So what made you think it was a baby and not just a pool of butter? I know it's hard to believe, but we just opened up the bath and then the bottle turned into a baby and started crying. It was the weirdest thing I ever saw. Artists working late on Trimane's fifth floor have seen the baby in their bar fridges. So when did you last see the buttermilk baby in the Buffalo Art Studio? I just saw it the other day. I mean, I was here late at night and one of the artists was working in the studio and, you know, I, I went and said, you know, why don't we have like some milk? And we went and opened the fridge, and there it was. We like jumped, we ran out, we called the cops, the cops came, but he wasn't there anymore. I said, I'm more of a modern guy. I, I, butter is just too buddy for me. I, I just, I don't know, I was working with all these boxes and then this baby. I learned that Tremaine had its very own dairy expert, a man named Amos Biggie. I caught him on his lunch break. Uh, I really am fascinated with the, the nature of dairy uh, and how it smells at times and solidifies into chunks. But uh, buttermilk's not necessarily a, uh, a living thing. Uh, it starts off micro bacteria and organisms, you know, and solidifies from a, from a pus excreted from a cow teat. Uh, but one has a sentient, sentient milk. I've never heard of such a thing. It was goopy and glammy and oh my gosh, uh, Dr. Phil Walrus says, I was telling him, calm down, no more barking, no more barking. I have seen a man with a beard of bees vomit in the bucket before, violently. You know, it seems like it's uh, a sort of like a, a, uh, a reflex, you know, or maybe a, uh, from a certain smell. The walruses were still barking, you know, Dr. Phil lookalikes. I told him, shh, shh, you'll watch your program later. I was supposed to have four days off, and I can't believe they got me carrying around this buttermilk baby. I couldn't understand how this baby just formed out of buttermilk. From the artist on the fifth floor, I learned about a woman named Charlene Tia who said she carries the actual buttermilk baby around in a cooler wagon behind her power wheelchair. So, do you actually believe this is a real baby? It's just like any other baby, except for you give him buttermilk instead of formula. After meeting with Charlene and her personal assistant, Stephen Graber, I concluded this baby was just another very clever yet greasy hoax. I learned from one eyewitness that the legend of Mighty Joe began at Aspire Western New York. Several of the co-op members were stranded in the country when their van was stolen. They looked for help at a nearby cabin. They met a giant man, some say taller than seven feet, he was chopping logs whole like they were ripe pineapples. They say that Mighty Joe got their van back by taking his belt off and using it like a bullwhip. He wrapped it around the van's bumper, holding the belt. He held back the stolen van from getting away. Because he was such a great man, the Aspire Co-op tried to hire him. Joe wanted to be part of something, a community. He was all set to start work, and on his first day, Mighty Joe never showed up. Hello. Joe, are you coming into work today? This is Mighty Joe's answering machine. I can't come to the phone because I'm out cutting wood to build a new children's casino and daycare center. But 
people say they hear wood chopping in the halls sometimes. Shadows of a large man appear around them. The floor shakes a little, like giant footsteps. And when Trimane was a windshield wiper factory, they found one worker split right in half from head to pelvic floor. Everyone thought it was Mighty Joe who did it, but others say the poor guy probably just got caught in the blades of their wiper sharpening station. Oh yeah, I met Mighty Joe once. He was in a cemetery and he was digging a grave and he has a glass eye. It, I don't know, it might even be Pyrex. Mighty Joe Co-op drank half of Lake Erie because he was dehydrated. Yeah. And I thought there was a volcanic eruption, but it was nothing but Mighty Joe. I'll let you imagine what he might have done, but it came out of a part of his body I can't even mention. He won a stare contest with the eye of a hurricane. Teeth are so yellow when he smiles at an intersection, the cars all slow down. They were making a movie in Buffalo. The problem was, it was a winter movie and it was summer and they needed snow. Well, they didn't have any snow. Mighty Joe, I do know this for sure, came to the rescue. He had a very bad scalp condition, but it turned into a great thing because he just put his hands in his scalp and he started shaking and all the dandruff came flying out. And that was their snow. That's what I know about Mighty Joe. Mighty Joe Corp sold his stomach pile to battery company. Probably Duracell. That's what I'd recommend. Several of the artists at Chimane got together to create a life-size model of Mighty Joe's head. It was clear that seeing a legend come to life was a highly emotional moment. Why do you make Mighty Joe co-op art? Well, ever since I was young, I've been a maker of things. And Mighty Joe co-op, or Mr. Joe, as I like to call him. I feel, I call him that because I have a personal relationship with him. He played dominoes with Stonehenge. Mighty Joe, he, he brings me back to my center. He, he, he brings me peace. He brings me serenity. And I don't, I no longer want to kill. Trimane officials guided me toward a renowned photographer in the building who claimed to have photographic evidence of the elusive Mighty Joe. So I was wandering around the Trimane Center, back near the tracks, and I saw Mighty Joe roaming around the south end of the complex. He had an axe, so I was afraid, but I knew I had to get some photographs of him. So I just started shooting away. All these pictures are blurry. No, the pictures aren't blurry. Mighty Joe is blurry. He's like a shadow. Even you believe Mighty Joe is real? I do! Look! Only skeptics believe that he's just another Bigfoot. Local historians tell of another legend that formed during Trimane's Bell era. Old man Crenshaw used to get sick at work a lot. He liked to freak out his co-workers by wearing a bear to bees on the job. One day, while Crenshaw was installing an engine, a bolt of seating upholstery fell on his cranium. Slightly injured and dazed, he started vomiting into a bucket and forcing his co-workers to smell the steam. He bolted across the tracks and into the nearby woods. During Trimane's Tricor era, Old Man Crenshaw sightings skyrocketed. One cold winter night, I got stranded at Trimane overnight and had an encounter with Old Man Crenshaw myself. 
I heard a gagging sound and bees buzzing, almost like electricity. I followed the ethereal sound and, th and then through the Trimane's electrical room cage, I saw the bucket. Then I saw the legendary man. What you see here is the only video documentation of Old Man Crenshaw. His epic barking seems to resound from another world. I followed him after he turned the corner, but he was gone. He vanished. Can a real man vanish so easily? Yeah! We're going in to confront Trimane's president, Matt Wolf. Um, can I tell him what this is about? Uh, the recent sightings of Mighty Joe Co-op and Old Man Crenshaw. that I've seen Mighty Joe and it's something I never want to see again. I was um, I work in the office and I was called in because some lights had gone out in a room down the hall and when I got down there I heard this noise from a closet that sounded like a freight train coming through and I opened the door and the lights were out and there was this huge man sleeping on the floor and he had actually eaten the light bulbs because he wanted a dark room to take a nap in. And I found out later that was Mighty Joe because I saw him in several other places. So what's so mighty about Mighty Joe? Well, let me tell you. Mighty Joe went to England, and when he was there, he played chess with Stonehenge. This is Ryan. He's here to see you. Hello, Ryan. No. No, no, you didn't see Crenshaw. That's just Billy Musy. Billy used to work for us, but after we let him go, he used to walk around pretending he was old man Crenshaw. He's a Crenshaw impersonator. You know, like an Elvis impersonator, but for Crenshaw. Does Billy Musy even look like Crenshaw? Well, he thinks he does. But he's, uh, he's no bar for that, Musi. So, you might have heard of uh, Old Man Crenshaw. Um, and you won't find him around Trimane anymore. He's over at the Amtrak's riding the rails. Uh, my husband's cousin's girlfriend's dad works for Amtrak and one day back in December, this past December, he said that he heard this loud humming noise and some uh, retching, really loud retching from below. So he went down below to where the tracks are and he saw a, 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 a car filled full of bees and over in the corners this man just constantly throwing up over and over and over again. Do you think Old Man Crenshaw is real or just a local fairy tale? Oh, I, I think he's real. My husband's cousin's girlfriend's dad wouldn't lie. And do you know why he was throwing up? Um, He's allergic to bees. <laughs> we found the alleged home of Billy Musi, otherwise known as Cren Old Man Crenshaw. We're going to take a walk and see if we can spot him. We know he barfs a lot, but I'm not sure if he drinks or not. Old man Crenshaw likes to barf in metal buckets. Maybe he barfs in stainless steel sinks. As we were looking for the alleged home of old man Crenshaw, a train happened to derail and maybe he's around here somewhere. I believe Crenshaw was the, was here and he was responsible for the railroad tragedy. Um, I, I don't, I'm, I'm glad that nobody was hurt, and, uh, but I, I didn't see him, I didn't see him, but I'm glad that nobody was hurt. But I do believe that he was behind it all. Based on what people told me, I'm wondering if Billy Musley caused this accident. People do say he hops from train to train often. Last time a train dread like this, Billy Musi was fired from Trimane.
So I'm going back to the place where I first heard about the buttermilk baby and the buttered penguin to get down to the bottom of this. It's been going around forever. Is it true workers used to eat buttered penguin for a special occasion on their lunch break? Oh, no, 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 no way. We don't eat no butter penguins or anything like that. No way. No, not since the days of Dr. Phil Walruses, you know. There is no such thing as buttermilk baby. This rumor's been going around forever. But we sure do like to play with little Spanky. Let him out, Katie. Come on out, Spanky. Here, boy. Come on, little boy. Come on, boy. We don't need no Dr. Phil Wallace. Here we go. Stay far, far back. Back, back, back. Oh, Spanky, you're so attractive. You're so cute. Ah, good, good little penguin. Good. Little. Wow, a buttered penguin. I guess that explains the buttermilk baby. Uh, it's a week here after the train derailment. Uh, we've come here looking for Billy Musi or Old Man Crenshaw. We're looking for any evidence we may have here. Wow, what was that? Let's go. I can't believe this. We gotta get over there. Wait, I think I see him. Just up ahead here. Excuse me, sir. Are you old man Crenshaw? Why, no, my name's Billy Musi. What can you tell us about the train derailment last week? Uh, I was taking a nap on the rails and uh, heard this horrible noise coming from behind me and, well, something bad happened. I'm just a Crenshaw impersonator. I've been working here and they let me go. Uh, what can you tell us about these items here? Oh, uh, well, mm, this is good. You want Want some of that? Um, no thanks. Well, my grandma had a Volkswagen Jetta and everything rolled over. And this is all that's left. Alright. Uh, this is for my afternoon nuptials and constitution, if you know what I mean. And this is from the derailment of last week. This is Sinky over here. I use that for my condition. So, you're Barry Musley, an old man Crenshaw impersonator. Do you have any bookings coming up? Well, I do primarily kids' parties. But I got my fingers crossed for Trimania this year coming up, if you know what I mean. Looks like somebody's getting the long arm of the law. So, I heard you have a condition. Well, I got this allergy to bees. And sometimes I throw up in the bucket, and for fun I make people smell the steam. Does your condition frequently affect you? <laughs> no. I can't say I found any evidence supporting the existence of the three legends of Trimane, but maybe a good legend doesn't need evidence. Perhaps the stories we tell bring us together as a community, provide necessary exercise and training for our imaginations, and above all, a story makes us listen to each other. If you listen long enough, you never know what you might hear. After all that, what do you believe now? <laughs>